I could try to grab something that's not a golden book, but yeah, where's the fun in that? So Sami Chan sent me so many golden books. And today we're going to look at... Yes, it's a little difficult with gloves. Oh boy, Smokey the Bear. Oh, I have some personal connection to Smokey. As do I. Interesting. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room, another episode brought to you by the generous donation of Sasami-chan. Yes, it was a big box. We're going to be at this a bit. Today we are looking at Smokey the Bear by Jane Warner. That name sounds familiar. Pictures by Richard Scarry. That name sounds a lot more familiar. Yeah, I didn't know the name, but I definitely know the work, especially since Ember brought up the imagery for me because I was like, I don't remember Richard Scarry. She's like, mm. Magic words bring up images of Richard Scarry. Oh, I know about that. The worm. Mm -hmm. Also, that is a very young Smokey the Bear, I just realized. It looks very young. And um, my guess would be this came from a yard sale because the 89 cent price tag is marked out. And this looks like it says 10 cents. Nice yeah. bargain. He is a cute Smokey the Bear. He might have some stories to share, too. <laughs> Ever since his rescue from a raging forest fire, Smokey the Bear has been a symbol of our national effort to fight the terrible destruction of our woodlands by fire. The publishers are proud to present Smokey's story as a little golden book. They hope that this book will help Smokey in his work. It has the official approval of the State Foresters and of the Forest Service U.S. Department of Agriculture. 12th Printing, 1971. Copyright 1955. Wow, that explains why he's so young, because this is his origin story. <laughs> and here's a story. My dad works for the U.S. Well, my dad used to work for the U.S. Forest Service. He's retired. He also used to play Smokey. <laughs> and I had an uncle who was also involved and sometimes played Smokey and sometimes played Sparky. I have lots of pictures of me as a young tyke next to my dad in a Smokey the Bear suit. <laughs> It was a bright May morning in the mountain forest of New Mexico. Bear Cub followed his mother out into the sunshine. He sniffed the hot, dry, pine-smelling air. This was Bear Cub's first spring. He was still young, and he had a lot to learn. Mother Bear was busy teaching him how to choose the tastiest berries, where to find clear drinking water, how to turn over a log to uncover a nice meal of bugs. Most important, his mother taught him, when danger threatens, Climb a tree. Hmm. This is very nice art. They're putting the detail where it's important, which is the bears and anything they're directly interacting with. But the backgrounds are also nicely handled with minimalist detail in a very nice, stylish way. One day, Bear Cub and his mother were out hunting tasty berries. Suddenly, Bear Cub's mother stopped and sniffed. Bear Cub sniffed, too. There was something strange in the air. His eyes smarted, and off in the distance, he heard a great roaring sound, like all the winds blowing together through the tops of the tall pines. Hmm. Once again, nice minimalist work for anything that's not really important, though the foreground is important, so we have this nice detail on the tree and the leaves and cute little smoky. <laughs> also, is this going to be another Bambi? <laughs> <laughs> Bear Cub rubbed his eyes with his paws, but they still smarted. And now a thick blackness was creeping toward them through the branches of the trees. All the creatures of the woods were fleeing from the roaring darkness. The deer and the squirrels, the rabbits and the birds. Also, for some strange reason, all these animals reminded me of an episode of Dragon Ball Z where Gohan helped stop a forest fire. Hmm. There were so many episodes of Dragon Ball Z, I'm pretty sure I didn't see that one. This is one of the early ones because it was when Gohan was young. Mm hmm Hurry, hurry, the birds were screaming as they flew. Mother Bear pushed Bear Cub along ahead of her as fast as his feet could go. But it was not fast enough. The thick smoke caught up with them. Bear Cub could not hear his mother's voice behind him. When he turned, he could not see her. Bear Cub was frightened. What should he do? Then he remembered. When danger threatens, his mother had taught him, climb a tree. So up a pine tree, Bear Cub went. Around him, the forest fire roared and crackled. Flames licked at Bear Cub's shaggy fur and singed his tender paws. But he closed his eyes and just hung on. 
When he opened his eyes again after a while, he could scarcely believe what he saw. Instead of the cool, green, shady woods all around him, stood hundreds of ugly, blackened sticks with trails of smoke still curling from them. Suddenly, he heard a friendly voice. Really nicely done art here, especially the fire scene over here with poor little bear cub, a.k.a. Smokey, clinging to the tree. And I clearly remember the stories about his paws being burnt. Mm-hmm. It was a firefighting forest ranger. The ranger reached up and took Bear Cub into his arms. What's your name, fellow? Smokey? From then on it was. Though Smokey could not understand the words, he knew the voice was kind. He knew the water from the ranger's canteen felt wet and cool in his dry throat. The human's nicely rendered. Very nice looking face. I wonder if they actually took the ranger's face or if it's just a generic one they came up with be interesting to know. He knew the food from the ranger's pack tasted fine and felt just fine in his hollow insides. He knew the salve and bandages made his burned paws feel good again. Then the ranger took Smokey to the game warden's home. He liked to sit with the family and play with their little girl. I wonder how much of this is, well, the stuff before the ranger found him is probably fictionalized, but I wonder how much of this after portion is true. Well, this definitely isn't, but... No, definitely not now. I wish every boy and girl could meet Smokey, said the state game warden. He'd teach them how extra important it is to be careful of fires in the woods. Good idea, said another. The best place for him to meet boys and girls is in a zoo. So into a plane went Smokey the Bear, and away he flew to Washington, D.C., where he lives in the wonderful National Zoo. Every day there, he meets boys and girls from all over the country. I love how they have him in the classic outfit with the hat and the pants, but he's off to the zoo. Yeah. He likes to have them learn and follow his easy rules to help him prevent terrible forest fires like the one that destroyed his home. These are Smokey's rules. Remind your parents and friends to break matches in two. When they can hold the burned end between their fingers, no fire is left. Oh, wow, this is dated. Crush out smokes, then use the ashtray. <laughs> a children's book referencing cigarettes. This, this isn't dated at all. <laughs> Drown campfires, then stir the ashes to make sure they are out. Never burn grass, brush, or trash on windy days. When they do burn it, they should have plenty of help. Please help your friend Smokey to prevent forest fires. Remember his rules and help others to remember them too. That explains why it's a young Smokey. Origin story. Woohoo! Yes, very early on. Also, in the scheme of things, you have to wonder how much damage this campaign has uh, possibly caused. <laughs> because we're taught that all forest fires are bad. Who patrolled the forest before we came to America? Ah. Uh. Here, here's the thing. We're not taught that all forest fires are bad nowadays. No, but I sure was when I was a kid. Yep. And uh, the damage it's caused is there's too much... Uh, let's see, give me a second here. It's, this, it's not undergrowth, but it's under death, maybe? It's this stuff that doesn't decompose, and it builds up over time, and it is very flammable. So when it does finally catch fire, it takes the whole forest with it. Where if that stuff was cleaned out... It's not that it takes the whole forest with it. That's okay. The problem is, is it burns too hot. So it cooks the ground, making it so it's infertile. Regular forest fires burn at apparently the just the right temperature that nature got used to. So things like pine cones open up and reseed the forest. Grasses grow back quicker foliage, and natural undergrowth comes back quicker because the ground is now extra fertile from the ash. But with the hotter fires, the ground sears, and it's very hard for the forest to recover after modern forest fires. But that's about as political as we're going to get. Now this has been Smokey the Bear, A Little Golden Book by Jane Werner. Pictures by Richard Scarry. Donated to Ember's Reading Room by Sasami-chan. Yes, it's a large box. Thank you, Sasami-chan. This is lots of fun. I really like 
the squash and this and Snow White. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we're nowhere near being done with the box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll put an Amazon link up as usual if we can find one. And thanks again for listening.